Hello everyone! Okay, today we'll be going through the CHIJ A Math Prelim paper. So for math papers, the first thing that you need to do whenever you see a question is to always identify what topic the question is under so that you can narrow down the possible methods of solving the question. Okay, so first, we'll now look at question one. So when we look at question one, as I've, no as I've noted in the corner over here, this is a binomial theorem question. So it would help if whenever you look at a question, you, after identifying what topic it is, you may want to write it down at a corner at the side of the question to remind yourself. So for this question, it's quite a simple one. You just need to use the binomial expansion formula that has already been given to you at the front of the question booklet, which is over here. Let me just highlight it for you. This one. Okay. So in this case, you just need to identify what is A, what is B and what is N? So over here, A is 1, B is minus K, and N is 6. So given that A is 1, there is a special case whereby the binomial expansion formula becomes a little bit simpler than what you see in the formula sheet. So for illustration, it's over here. When A equals to 1, 1 plus b to the power of n equals to 1 plus n choose 1b plus n choose 2b square and so on and so forth. Okay, so what, all that you need to do is to just sub the values of 1 minus k and 6 into the equation and you will get this. 1 minus 6kx plus 15k square x square after you expand it out. And so there you have it, that's your answer. Okay. So next, the next question, what we need to do here is to expand the expression so that you can find um, the values of k based on what they have given you, the information that they have given you, which is that the coefficient of x squared is 393. So since we are only interested in the coefficient of x squared, after expanding the equation, we only need to expand the values that give you um, x squared. So as you can see here, you just expand 2 minus 3x to the, 2 minus 3x squared and you get 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And expanding 1 minus kx to the power of 6, you get this, which is what you got from the previous question. And we stop only here because we are only interested in the values, the coefficients of x squared, okay? Which is why I have only expanded out the values of the coefficients of x squared. So the next thing that we need to do is to factorize out the x square. So you'll get 9 plus 72k plus 60k square x square. So given that we know that the coefficient of x square is supposed to be 393, we can equate these two values and then we can see that in this equation, the only unknown that we have is k. And if we, when we rearrange the equation to 60k plus 72k minus 384 equals to 0, which is done by bringing um, 393 over, we can solve this as a regular quadratic equation. So with, you will get the final answer to be k equals to 2, Okay, it goes to minus 16 over 5. Okay? So now I'll move on to the next question. This question is one relating to graphs. So if you want, you can write it down in the corner. Like I have done. Okay? So what we have is the graph of ln y plotted against the graph of... The graph of ln y plotted against x. So... We know that this is a straight line, right? And the equation of a straight line is y equals is y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1, where y and x refer to the vertical and horizontal axis, while m refers to the gradient. So in this case, the vertical axis is actually ln y, and the horizontal axis is x. So you just suck those points into the equation. So what you need to do is find the value of m. And so the gradient can be found using the two points that they have given you. 
6 minus 4 over 5 minus 3 is the simple rise over run method. And you get 1. So after subbing all the values in, into the straight line equation, you have ln y minus 4 equals to 1 times x minus 3. After expanding, we just make y the subject, and there you have your answer. y equals to e to the power of x plus 1. Okay? So next, they want the question wants you to sketch the graph of y against x and indicate the coordinates at which the graph cuts the vertical axis. So the graph of y against x would be the graph of y equals to e to the power of x plus 1. So you just draw a regular um, exponential graph, which will look like this. Okay? So this will be the basic graph. And the coordinates at which the graph cuts the vertical axis would be when x equals to 0. So when x equals to 0, y equals to e to the power of 0 plus 1 equals to e. And hence, our coordinates at which the graph cuts the vertical axis would be at 0, e. Okay? Now, we move on to the next part of the question, which is about manipulating the equation to get this one over here. Okay? You need to make so you need to make the equation look like the one in the box, in the red box, so that you can find the value of a and of b. So the equation of a straight line is y equals to mx plus c, where y is the vertical axis and x is the horizontal axis. So since we have the graph of 1 over y against x squared, whereby 1 over y is the vertical axis and x squared is the horizontal axis, you will have to sub in these values into this y equals mx plus c equation. So this is how it's going to look like because um, y, which is the vertical axis, will be replaced by 1 over y. The horizontal axis is replaced by x squared. The gradient is negative 1 over 4. And the intercept on the vertical axis, which is c, will be is 3. Okay? So after you manipulate the equation, you need to rearrange the terms to make y the subject as per the equation above, the, y, the one that says y equals to 2a over x squared minus 3b. So after you get the equation over here, you just continue to, to make this equation look like the one above. So this can be done by extracting out 2 and 3, 2 times minus 2 and 3 times 4 in the top and the bottom respectively. And you can see that now it looks the same as the equation above, whereby a equals to minus 2 and b equals to 4. And that's your answer. Okay, moving on. Next question is on trigonometry. It's a proving question. So one tip for proving trigo questions is, especially if you don't know how to start, is to always try and see which of the formulas in the trigo formula list can be used or substituted into the equation to make it look a little closer to what you want it to look like, which is what you're supposed to prove. Okay? So even if you are lost, you should just try to um, try to substitute the various possible equations in to see if, you know, you might find that you might find new inspiration along the way or you can just get method marks as well. Okay? So over here, from the, from the first step, which is what they told you to do, is sine 3x equals to sine x plus 2x, right? Then you use the property sine a plus b equals to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b to expand this equation into sine x cosine 2x plus cosine x sine 2x. And then you can further um, expand this 
by changing cosine 2x and sine 2x into something else using these equations, where cosine 2x equals to 1 minus 2 sine square x and sine 2x equals to 2 sine x cosine x. This is so because we want to change everything into sine in the end, like sine, because our final, the final outcome that we want that has no cosines in it. So the next thing that we should do is try and get rid of the remaining cosines on this side. You see on the, the set on the left has no more cosines, but the one on the right still has two. So after expanding it, we get cosine square and we can change cosine square to sine square using the formula 2 cosine square a minus 1 equals to 1 minus 2 sine square a. So after this, after we expand, you see that we get the answer that we want. Okay? Now for the next question, we do the same thing. We start by differentiating d dx sine 3x and d dx 3 sine x minus 4 sine to the power of 3x. So we will differentiate first and this is what we will get. And then now we have to change the question based on the question the outcome that we want only has cosines in it. But down here we have a sine square. So we have to get rid of this sine square. And how do we do that? We can change sine square into 1 minus cosine square using the formula sine square x equals to 1 minus cosine square x. Okay? And from there, after you expand, you will get this. And then because in the question, there's the coefficient of cosine 3x is only 1, you realize that you can simplify this whole equation by dividing everything by 3. So if you divide by everything by 3, you will get this answer, which is what they wanted you to show in the question. Okay? Cosine 3x equals to 4 cosine cube x minus 3 cosine x. So as I mentioned, it's really all about knowing how to manipulate the existing um, equation that you have into the one that they want that the question asks you to show. And this can be done by using all of these and this um, trigo um, equations and formulas that can be found at the front of your formula list. So if you are in a lot, if you are at a loss, just go to the formula list and try and see what you can put in. Okay? So the next question is on the roots of quadratic equations. So what you need to do is to use the sum and product of root formulas to solve these. These kind of questions are quite standard, so you just need to use the basic formula, which is alpha plus beta equals to minus b over a, and alpha times beta equals to c over a. So in this case, B over, minus b over a is minus 4x over 1. Sorry, it's minus 4 over 1, so you get 4. And alpha beta is c over a, so you get 7 over 1, which is 7. Okay? So using this, we can solve for alpha square plus beta square by using this formula. Alpha square plus beta square equals to alpha plus beta bracket square minus 2 alpha beta. And using this, we can sub in the values, the sums and the roots of the, pro of the, the sums and the products of the roots, and you will get 2. Okay? And the same goes for part B. You do it, the, the method is the same. You expand, sorry, you factorize and use the alpha plus beta and alpha times beta, the sum and the product of the roots to solve this equation. So for B, alpha cubed plus beta cubed equals to alpha plus beta times alpha plus beta squared minus 3 alpha beta. 
and so you can sub in this, this, and this because you have the values that you have found over here already. Right? So here we go. The answer is minus 20. Okay? So for the next question, find a quadratic equation with these with inter integer coefficients with these roots. So what you need to do here is to find the sum and the product of the new roots and then use these to find the new equation. Okay? This is because the new equation um, can be found using this red color formula over here, whereby this is the sum and this is the product. So you can use this, you can use the sum and product of the roots to find the new equation. So using that, look at the sum of the new roots over here. You just add up the two roots and you get this. And then we sub in once again after expanding. We sub in using the values that we have found above over here which is sum is 4 and product is 7, right? So you can sub them in, you get 4 minus 20 over 7 squared plus 2 plus 1. And that's minus 4 over 13. So that's the sum of the new roots. Then next you have to find, so you have found this part. So the next you have to find the product. Okay? So now we move on to find the product you expand and you realize that you have the top half which is the product of the old roots which is 7 and the bottom half which is the same as the previous over here 7 squared plus 2 plus 1 you get 7 over 52. So now that you have found the sum and product of the new roots you can move on to apply this equation to get I mean this formula to get the new equation which is x squared minus minus 4 over 13x plus 7 over 52 equals to 0. And after you simplify, you will get 52x squared plus 16x plus 7 equals to 0. Okay?